Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah Zantinetti, and we, my wife and I, are here this morning to share the Word of God with you. So let's just dive in. Today's message is, Who is Minding the Mind? <laughs> Who is Minding the Mind? You know, I talk a lot about the mind because that's where it all happens. The battle is between the ears. And so, as long as we're here in this world and we are both fallen and redeemed, only the only the, the unbelievers are fallen and not redeemed. Yeah. But we have two natures living in us. We have well, two laws, let's put it that way. And we're going to be looking into that. Who is minding the mind? And let's look at 1 Corinthians. And we're going to be looking actually through 1 through 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. And it says this. And I, brethren and sisters, could not speak to you as spirit-filled, but as worldly, carnal, as infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you were not yet ready. Indeed, even now, you are not yet ready. Verse 3. For you are still worldly, carnal. For since there is jealousy and strife among you, aren't you worldly? And walking in a human way. Now understand this, that here in the church, there was a schism going on. There were some fights going on. One was saying, I belong to Paul. The other one, I'm following Peter. The other one says, I'm following Apollos. And he says, hey, Paul says, who died for you? I didn't die for you. Christ died for you. And so there's a lot of things going on. But they were still, although they were a church and they were existing, they didn't grow up because they had their mindset on things that were not godly. Now, understand, the Greek world is a powerful world even today. The philosophy and, and all, the, uh, all the wisdom of the Greeks, they're very powerful. And so he came against a lot of things, and it was not easy. He had to deal with scholars and philosophers and all kinds of people with all kinds of theories. But understand this, okay? When he says, I, brethren, could not speak unto you as spiritual, but, uh, but as unto carnal, even as babes in Christ. Now understand, there are two stages in the Christian experience. The first thing that we should be, or should be mentioned, I want to mention this, that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I want to say that because you may say, well, I feel condemned when I fall. Well, you don't have to feel condemned. In Christ, you are. You are in Christ. You cannot come out of Christ. Where are you going to go? And if you did come out of Christ, who's going to redeem you again? It doesn't work that way. You don't come out of Christ, and then one day you come back into Christ, and then you're out of Christ. It doesn't work that way. In Christ, there is no condemnation. But this is why he addresses them, carnal Christians, because they were not spiritual, meaning they were not walking according to the Holy Spirit. This should not be an excuse to continue, of course, in our sinful patterns. So we must learn to switch off our brains to one thing and turn it on to another. That's a byproduct of being with God. And by this I mean you have to submit to the Holy Spirit. We must all submit to the Spirit of God and not to the fallen nature of sin. Some Christians are carnal and some are spiritual. But the discernment which God gave Paul, he saw that the Corinthians were carnal and he wanted to tell them so. They should have been teachers by now. And you find a lot of people like that today. And you say, how come in Talk Straight Bible we're always dealing with law and mind and sin? And we, Because there's, there's enough people out there talking about how many blessings you're going to receive today. God did not call me to tell you how many blessings you're going to receive today, but to get you to follow Jesus and to live according to his word. This is our thrust. So you will find the word carnal four times in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And it simply means the mindset. When Paul first visited Corinth, he had fed the believers with the elementary milk of the word because they were weak and young in faith. And that's fine. When you're young, you need to give them milk 
They don't have teeth. Babies don't have teeth to chew on meat. So little by little, they grow. And before you know it, you give them their first taste of meat. And they love it. And after that, they're, they're bound. <laughs> the apostle felt that all his preaching would do no good if he talked to them about spiritual things to people who weren't spiritual. They were Christians, real Christians, babes in Christ, but they were in a deadly fault, and that was that they were still carnal. Remember, in the Greek world, just like it is in our world, there's so much to keep us occupied. That's why we must mind the mind and keep it on Christ. They could not receive the deep things of the spirit. They could not receive this kind of instruction because they were new believers. So Paul had to teach them only the elementary truths concerning Christ, which he speaks as milk. Now, let me share something with you about living according to the flesh or the spirit or having your mindset on either or. Romans chapter 8 verse 5 through 8 tells us this. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. For the mindset of the flesh is death, but the mindset of the spirit, the Ruach of God, is life and peace. Notice, there's double benefit. You want a blessing? Here's the blessing. You have life and peace when your mind is in the spirit, but when it's on the things of the flesh, it is death. For the mindset of the flesh it is hostile toward God, for it does not submit itself to the law of God. This is, this is Paul speaking about law now. They do not submit themselves to the law of God because they cannot. For those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Now listen, Paul uses the word law here in the New Testament. And by the way, this law is the Torah. When you look it up, this law is the Torah. Going right back to the first five books of Moses. That's why I study the Old Testament as much as I can, because when I see it in the New Testament, it makes just so much more sense. It just makes more sense. So living according to the flesh of the Spirit. Those who are living according to the flesh are under the influence of the principles of the sinful nature. There's a principle in life. Only the Christian can have two natures living inside. To a working, one is toward God, and the other one is toward the fleshly nature. Now, Paul explores the frustration of everyone who has ever failed to live up to the principles which he knows are right. Anyone with a bad habit, you know, such as smoking, overeating, um, you know, getting drunk, etc. Knows the tr He knew the truth about this. And they knew the truth about it because he did not stay quiet about it. But look what, look what Jesus says. Look what Yeshua says. The spirit is willing, but the flesh, that is the old nature, or the human nature, is weak. This is what he was saying. The flesh is willing, the, excuse me, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. There's a rabbi by the, by the name of Yisak who said, at first sin is like an occasional visitor. Then like a guest who stays a while. And finally, like the master of the house. <laughs> you give that thing room, it'll grow inside of you. And I know, you know it. I still think about that young man I was talking about. He says he doesn't sin anymore because he's a Christian. What a rude awakening he's going to have one day. Oh. Romans chapter 7 verse 21 says, I find then a law when I will to do the right, evil is present with me. This is Paul in chapter 7 of Romans. Please take time to read chapter 7 of Romans. It's, uh, it's a little awkward to read because the way Paul writes and he speaks. Remember, he's speaking about law and spirit, but I'm sure there are many versions out there that you can get that may clarify just a little more. He says, I'm finding a law that works in me. He says, and when I, when I want to do what's right, he says, evil is right there with me. In other words, you know what I'm talking about. 
right? Like we talked about passing that piece of cake, right? And you, and you know, this, you felt the spirit of God tell you, don't eat that. You don't need that. And you say, yes, Lord, I want to do that. But then the evil part inside says, come on, you can just take that. It's not going to kill you. And then you wake up in the morning and says, why did I eat that five pieces of cake? <laughs> Now, the first nature is the fallen nature, but the second nature is divine, and it is always pointed upward and desires to uh, be in a position to obey God. Look what 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4 says. I love it. This is my hope. This is my strength. Thank God for this. He says, and I quote, According as his divine power, has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Did you hear that? His power is divine. That means his nature has given us the power of life and godliness through the knowledge, oh, wait a minute, through the knowledge of him who has called us to his to, um, to glory and virtue. Now think about it. He said that you have divine power to, you know, for life and godliness, but he says it's through knowledge. So here we go again, back to studying the word of God and staying in the word of God continually. Verse four, through which he has given to us exceedingly great and precious promises so that, watch this, by these you might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped, that is past tense, the corruption that is in the world through lust. You know, people say that pride is the first sin. I learned in scripture that it is not pride. Lust is at the root of the tree. Pride is the fruit of lust. Lust is what I want. For the enemy, Satan looked at himself and he lusted after his own beauty, thus becoming prideful. And he fell. I used to believe, I heard people say, pride is the original sin. No, lust is the root. The lust, the desire, and the passion for self, that is carnal. And when we're doing that, we're acting no better than the enemy himself, actually. Look what he says now in Romans chapter 7, verse 22. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind. Did you hear that? In the inner man, the spirit man, that he is born again, he says, I desire the heart of God. I desire the law of God. You know, I cry out because I desire to know more of God. But I see another law working in my members, in my mind, the carnal mind, warring against my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin being in my members. Two laws, one law, righteous, holy, pure, life, godliness. The other one, corrupt, destruction. And we're fighting with those all the time. So what is the mindset of the carnal? Well, the mindset of the carnal is enmity, hatred, and attitude toward God. What is enmity? Hating the thought of God, resisting the grace of God. Now, you say, what? Yeah, it's talking about insubordination, transgression of the law of God. Utter, incom utter incompatibility with his nature. But can a Christian actually mind the things of the flesh? Absolutely. You're not condemned. Remember the beginning it says, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. But, but, if we mind the things of the flesh, we will find ourselves captured and sneered by the carnal nature, the propensities, the, the flavors, the passion of the flesh and we live in it so how does god look at the carnal mind he regards it as displeasure because it is against his nature there's no god doesn't excuse it he can't he's holy and he sees it as a threat to his kingdom a christian has love for god absolutely right i mean that's obvious but watch this but also but also being in a state of feeling and active listen actively ignoring the spirit of God. Oh, Christian loves God. I mean, you, I, I mean, every Christian has to have some kind of love for God, but they can actively and passionately give in to the voice of their flesh, resisting, being in rebellion to the spirit of God. You says, I'm never rebellious against the spirit of God. Whenever he tells you to do something, if you don't do it, that's rebellion. And to tell you the truth, we're acting like witches. The Bible tells us that rebellion 
is the same as witchcraft. That goes for everybody. So we have to draw close so that we can become better Christians. The attitude of the Christian must be set, ordained to obey God and establish his kingdom. So how can we break the cycle? We must train the mind to think differently. We must not consent to the pleasures of the flesh. Listen to this. When you're watching TV or you listen to a radio and you don't like what's being conveyed, what do you do? You flip the channel. We have to learn how to flip the channel. I'm learning more how to do that. A little hard. But I'm learning more how to do that. And so many people, even in the world, they train themselves hard and long to, you know, have the definition of muscles, you know, they, every muscle. But the Christian must work even harder in discipleship to, dis to discipline themselves to become much more defined, spirit-filled, so that they can live for God. An individual, a Christian, can only live by the Spirit if he is filled with the Holy Spirit or she is filled with the Holy Spirit to obey the voice of God. For the Christian, the voice of the Lord is in the principles of his doctrine and it speaks deeply into the heart. Why? Because this is where the conversion begins. And some Christians are carnal and some are spiritual, but by discernment, which God gave Paul, he saw that they were carnal. And so sometimes you will find that being in the carnal is less pleasurable than walking in the spirit. Four times carnal is mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Almost concluding here. In John, 1 John 2, 15 through 17 says, Do not love the world, nor the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, everything in the world, everything in the world, the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the boasting of life, that is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the boasting of life is not from the Father, the pride of life, but from the world. The world is passing away along with his desires, but the one who does the will of God will abide forever. The Bible speaks to us about the first Christians. Listen to this. The first Christians in Scripture, in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. This is the gift. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, I conclude, and be, Paul said, and be filled with the Spirit. This must be the life of the, be the believer. God bless you. Have a wonderful Spirit-filled day. And remember, Mind the things of the spirit, not the things of the flesh. Amen.